They've got to fix the, the carroting, the stomping around like a petulant child stuff that people just don't like. Okay, so all the species are multiracial now. Is the new Amazon series, The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power getting review bombed? They wanted her to be a girl boss. And I'm a fan of Lord of the Rings, actually. Only Galadriel is, I guess that's a Lord of the Rings character. Tolkien was not a fourth wave intersectional feminist. They did something wrong by not making Legolas Hispanic or something. The actual Don Lemon and some cannabis dispensary owner from Marin. I'm surprised they didn't say the South will rise again. Lord of the Rings, the ring, the rings of power, the hula hoop and earrings. Because their reasonings are attacked. I've been a fan of Tolkien for longer than I've been a fan of not shitting all over myself. My whole family loves Tolkien. Like for example, my little sister nearly starred up A up aid herself at an elementary school Halloween parade because it turns out if Gandalf shrinks but the beard doesn't, it becomes a bit of a tripping hazard. And there's only two reasons that in the year of our Ford 2022 that Latro is still up and running. Reason number one is named Dad. Reason number two is named Mom account who dad keeps up to date for her. Suffice it to say, the Millers love Middle Earth. What the Millers don't love is uh, gatekeepers, Tolkien snobs, grifters uh, who know nothing about the legendarium, pimping it out for culture war bullshit, and uh, tomatoes in our antipast. You just don't need them. There's more than a few reasons to dislike Rings of Power and to criticize it, but the lion's share of the attention the show has gotten since its first trailer debut has been overwhelmingly negative, and the overwhelming majority of that overwhelming negativity has been overwhelmingly untrue, disingenuous and political. But why? Why would someone come on the internet and purposefully misrepresent things just to make me upset? Everyone is mad at this show. Racists are mad because a dwarf got a tan. Uh, Peter Jackson stands are mad because the show abandoned New Zealand. New Zealanders are mad because their economy abandoned New Zealand. Uh, Tolkien fans are mad because an elf got a tan. And everyone else is mad because some douchebags drinking coffee out of a mug with their own face on it told them that they should be. And next time you hear or see someone complaining about black actors not being realistic on the show, point them in my direction. I'll get them in touch with the talking dragon. He'll fly over the fucking whole country, get in touch with the talking trees. We'll get them to try and communicate that to the undying elves. Then they'll get that to the season one of Rings of Power is passable at its worst and pretty damn good at its best, especially for the first season of a show. In season one of The Simpsons, Homer looked like a feral bulldog that fell in a vat of tartrazine and Marge looked like a woman from Staten Island. The office almost didn't make it past season one because in season one, Michael was pitiful, abrasive, depressing, and the worst sin of all, chubby and bald. And in season one of Family Guy, Meg's voice voice actor was more sus than a character from Vramungus. And I know ROP is a little different in this situation because this first season of a show had a, a $300 million budget, but uh, it's not only bigger budgets that make shows better over time. It's also the clarity, insight, and feedback you get from releasing your product to a wider audience. So why don't we help with that feedback part? I think this video in particular, more than any of my other ones, is a testament to the idea that the world could use a few more wrinkles in its collective thought sponge. So that's why I teamed up with Brilliant for this video to turn your clay matter into gray matter. The, the wheel makes things more smooth, actually. Can we fix that in post? Brilliant is a website and application that aims to make learning a more active, engaging, and enjoyable experience. With courses built from the ground up with simplicity and interactivity in mind and new content every month on the site, Brilliant can help you find a new love for learning. And whether that love be for geometry or quantum computing, Brilliant leaves that up to you and the depth of the ridges on your frontal lobe. But let me be clear. Brilliant is hands down one of the best ways to engage with the STEM subjects in a way that actually enriches your understanding. And that's why I'm very happy to say that Brilliant is offering 20% off, also known in the math world as one fifth. <laughs> Brilliant is offering 20% off their premium annual subscription if you sign up at my link, brilliant.org slash James Miller. So thank you very much and uh, let's get back to that feedback stuff. <laughs> Arondir is as strong a male protagonist as any fantasy show could hope to have. Galadriel is strong, intense, and obviously fallible, and while some people take issue with that, thinking it doesn't line up with the character that we know and love from the trilogy, I think it's a really powerful starting point for her overall character arc. Tyro Mahafadin, whose name I just said with 
great confidence but has no phonetics on Google, so that could be terribly wrong, I apologize, is one of the most talented young actors I've seen grace a screen in a very long time. The wide array of locales in the show are absolutely gorgeous. The new orc design and the makeup and the prosthetics look fucking great. And not just because the last time I saw a new orc design, it looked like a fucking overgrown toddler with alopecia and eczema. Alendio's actor is one of the most talented and natural feeling performers that has ever graced Middle Earth on the screen. And that is a long line of talent to compete with. And the Harfoots are every bit as quirky and unique as the Hobbits of the Shire and feel like the truest representation or transplant of PJ's Middle Earth that we see in Rings of Power. There's so much that this show does well and it's being drowned out by all the bullshit. And don't get me wrong, I went into this show wanting to hate it, but after watching it, I realized it's kind of just fun. That's what it does best. It's fun to be back in Middle Earth. It's fun to watch the Harfoots sing, dance, and tell stories. It's fun to watch Galadriel fucking manhandle the entire infantry force of Numenor. And it's especially fun to watch an Uruk's gaping eye hole squirt evil aids into a man's open mouth. And honestly, it's, it's nice to have a more hopeful, upbeat fantasy show to contrast the more gritty stuff that we've been used to over the last 10 or 15 years, like Game of Thrones, which I fucking adore, or like House of the Dragon, which is off to a fantastic start itself. If you don't know, House of the Dragon is another fantasy show. Interestingly enough, it's about two women coming to the helms of their families and fucking vying for power in a male-dominated society and trying to modernize an archaic patriarch. And yet, Rings of Power is the feminist doo-doo crap because the fucking vagina girl got too strong with the sword. Because women bosses can do everything, right? Yeah! All right, who ordered the oversized cupcakes? <laughs> Now, for the bad. Every homage to PJ's trilogy in the show, besides Always Follow Your Nose, is pretty fucking bad. And it just serves to make me want to compare the two, compare this show to PJ's far superior work, which is the last thing they should want to do and not the awesome Marvel fan service that old Jeffy boy thinks it is. The name of the show is pretty just boring and generic. Um, it really, it doesn't feel fantastical whatsoever. I guess they were going for the blank of blank thing. But uh, also the intro is not much better. I'd say it's worse. To me, it reminds me of like, if a art major had a video project that they forgot about in the night before, they didn't know what to do. So they just took Grandpa Joe's ashes off the mantle and dumped them on the table and called it abstract. Nori's actor looks like she's perpetually watching her childhood dog get put down no matter what is supposed to be happening on the show. The stranger goes from caveman gibberish to master of English in, I don't know, the span of like 47 seconds. This might be a nitpick, but uh, a sealed door let his horse assault that apple with them big old lips and then 10 seconds later uh, sucked on it like a binky. The writing at the show is somewhat inconsistent. Like for the majority, it's decent, good, and at points, great. But then you get shit like the stranger's mysterious evil arc, which is really contrived and silly. I don't even know if it would work with great writing, but it definitely doesn't work with this. I'm good. And while some of those were nitpicks and jokes and things I think the show can and should improve upon with reflection, this is something that they just have constantly and consistently missed on, which is the sense of scale. I have not been convinced once that a thousand riders are riding into war and then we have about 31 people fucking hacking each other up in this little town with four houses in it. And never being able to deliver once on that sense of scale leaves the world feeling underpopulated and unimportant. But I guess that makes sense because Jeff fucking Bozo loves hiring one one dude to do the work of three people. If you've noticed, for the last few minutes, we've kind of just been talking about a show. A uh, show you might like, a show you might not, but in the end, just a show, not leftist propaganda or Jeff Beanzos' capitalist brainchild. Just a show, a show that I personally thoroughly enjoyed and totally understand if you didn't. All I hope is if you meant to give the show a shot, if you were excited for it and then backed away understandably because of all the bullshit surrounding its release, uh, maybe you do give it that shot. Maybe you sit down over Christmas break here and watch it and maybe you'll like it. It's interesting because Tolkien's stories are ones of love, light, hope, music, and unity more than anything. In essence, Sauron's whole plan was the unity of Middle-earth by force. And if the Valar had come down and squashed him like the bug he was to them, that would have been unity by force just to a different end. Instead, they sent down the Astari to guide the good people of Middle-earth to the only true means of defeat 
defeating evil at its core, which is unity by choice. Comparing the world and the landscape of 2022 to that of the turn of the millennia when the trilogy came out, maybe it makes sense that a story about hope and love and unity today is written off as leftist propaganda. Or maybe it doesn't, and the only reason it kinda maybe seems to is because there's money to be made in convincing you that it does. Or maybe not, who knows? <laughs> I don't. Thank you very much for watching my video. Thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring my video. Check them out if you need some riches up on that thang in your dome. And happy holidays to you and yours if you celebrate. My Christmas wish this year is that hopefully they cast Jeff Bezos as Saruman in the remake of the extended edition of the third movie, if you know what I mean. Okay, bye-bye.